and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. Today's been so busy, I am ready for a nap. <laughs> but instead I'm filming, so hi! And I am back for my week 8 wrap up. And week 8, this is when Rachel's inner mood reader reared her lovely and contrary head and decided, no, I don't want to read anything you wanted to. And so I was really fishing around for things. First, what I have finished this week is I finished three short stories. The first one I finished was The Girlfriend's Guide to Gods by Maria Devana Headley. I know that she's well known for a Beowulf translation that she did that many people call Brewolf. I haven't read it yet. And this was alright. I felt like it was very cynical. The character was someone who wanted to be in a relationship desperately, but every relationship she chose was not a good fit or something bad would happen. And even when she realized that she had the power to be herself and should be fine with that, she it, it didn't feel like that actually made her happy. So it was just okay for me. Then I read The Secret Life of Bots by Suzanne Palmer and loved this. Back when it was written in 2018, it, it was nominated for the Hugo's and I think it actually won. And I like I said, I loved it. It was so much fun. This was about a little multi-user bot who gets reanimated because ship has a task that they need the multi-bot to do. And it, as it's trying to complete its task, it realizes there's a bigger issue at hand and figures out a solution that the humans on board and the ship itself is not exactly happy with, but all the other bots really like the idea and they got to participate as well. And it seems like there might be some more stories connected to it. So I'm looking forward to reading more of those as well. And then I read With Her Eyes by Xi Jin Lu. And this was an interesting science fiction story, short story. In this version of Earth, there is a technology where glasses can be made. And so like I could be here and then somebody over in Germany could put these glasses on and then I could see what was going on. And so in this case, the main character is wanting to go on vacation. He asks off time and his boss is like, yes, under the condition you take these eyes with you. So he goes and gets the eyes, briefly meets the person attached, and it looks like they're in space. And he goes, oh, well, that makes sense that you would want to see what Earth is like. He notices that her reactions to things on the Earth are not typical. And they're not what he's expecting from someone in space. And I'm not going to spoil why that is, because he does figure it out. This story, it really is more about what could be technology-wise in the future, and less about having a wrap-up of the characters. And I enjoyed it. If I remember right, I said that I was going to read more of Forging a Nightmare, and I did not. I'm still at the same point and I unfortunately have to return to my library today so that's one reason why I needed to film this wrap up to be like this is being put on pause and I will pick it up in the future I put it on my currently reading list on Goodreads so it will be in my face and I won't forget I promise and I think part of the reason like I was having a hard time getting into that is I just wanted a space opera and so I had originally planned to pick up a, the Privilege of Peace by Tanya Huff, and I did. I got about 50 pages in and realized that this was not working for me very well. And I don't know why, but I know in the book before this one, it just seemed like we were trying to give Torin a, an emotional arc or a growth arc when she's been who she is this whole time. And yeah, I didn't think that was necessary. And so it feels like we're kind of still going off of that. I'm, I'm going to finish it, but I didn't feel like I wanted to continue with the story because 
still building off of things that happened before and at this point it's not in a satisfying way for me as mean as that sounds which is crazy because the first book in this trilogy I love it was one of my favorite books of last year but then the rest of the trilogy has just been like eh so so for me so I don't know we'll see I, I mean I will finish it I just don't know when it's staying on my shelf I'm not sure if I mentioned this last week or not because I don't remember when it was but recently I read the first short story in this and I believe there's two more and then it's just kind of like information about the author um, yeah and I, I enjoyed it it was an interesting take uh, it's like supposed to be a tragic romance where a man and woman are supposed to be meeting together to get married but she had to go take her family to Alpha Centauri and so he decided to take a trip in space so he would then write back on Earth at the same time she would and then something happened where she was going to be late so then he did something where he thought that would get him back on time instead of waiting the few months for her to arrive and then like his plans were thwarted and it's just their like love or well it's all of his letters to her and then some of the letters he's received you don't really get to hear her voice of it but just his reaction to the letters this is n I like the story for what it was it is not how I would choose things and so I totally had to put my brain on hold and just kind of go with the flow be like okay this is someone who's not you and them making decisions based off of how they make decisions yeah so like I said I was just really wanting a space opera and this was on my library shelf I have like 40 books out from the library because who knows what is going to strike my fancy right but ended up this one and I picked up The Cruel Stars by John Birmingham this is the first time I've read anything by this author the second book in this series came out either in January or February I can't remember but it had picked it had piqued my interest and so I had to go back and start from the beginning and I am just shy of halfway through I'm really enjoying this it does have like six points of view which is a little much for me I'm, I'm not a big I'm okay with multiple points of view but not too many so it's just verging on too much too many but they do have a nice interconnection of the characters so all the plot is still going towards each other and I am really enjoying this so I plan to finish this this week and then I also know I said last week that I was gonna pick this up and I didn't but I started reading it today at, in between the chores and errands that we were running and definitely gonna finish that this this weekend I promise because I actually put this on pause in order to film this video and just the voice has caught my attention just like you know those of you who have said that you like this said it would I am enjoying this and then for after I and then for after finishing those oh I don't know um so I'm finally getting you sexy thing which was gonna be my science fiction buzzword prompt for February it finally came in, in the library I was supposed to get it at the beginning of the month and I can't really be upset at the person who was holding it because yeah I do that sometimes I just hope it's really good yeah I'd like to work on this some more because this closes out the series but if I'm needing a break from science fiction I can always read The Dim Sun of All Fears by Vivian Chan this is second in the Noodle House Mysteries or I have Far From the Light of Heaven which is another space opera and I have heard a lot of people really enjoying this book so I'd like to read it before I do my Hugo ballot to see if maybe I want this to be on the ballot so that's my book wrap up for my writing wrap up this week you know I'm getting closer to the beginning of March when I plan to pick up my write for 10 minutes a day goal and um, having this break from writing has been very beneficial 
because I feel like sparks of ideas coming on. And actually, I so I had I have a document, a Google document, where I made a list of anthologies and magazines that I was interested in, like submitting a short story to, because I'm working on that part of my craft. I, I just kind of looked at like, okay, first one that's due. What's the theme? And tried to see if something would pop up. And the one that popped up to me, their prompt is a cozy fantasy. And I was like, cozy fantasy. Okay. Okay. How would I do that? And I had the idea. And if this idea sparks your interest and you want to write something with this plot idea, go for it because I haven't given you any of my details. But my thought idea was mermaids in a cat cafe. And yeah, I, I wrote basically a zero draft outline kind of for the short story. And that is kind of my goal for this next week is to flesh that out so I can then submit it the week afterwards. I'm excited. Again, if the idea of mermaids in a cat cafe strikes your fancy and you want to write something with that, go for it because you're not going to come up with the idea I have. Just saying. But I'm very excited. I also this weekend need to finish beta reading the story that I was approved for. So that is my goal for tomorrow, Sunday, in between doing laundry. And then for other media, I am still working on those storytelling videos. Uh, my external hard drives don't quite have enough memory for all of them. I have a couple... Th there's three videos that are over an hour long because these tellers not only, two of them we got interviews for, and then all of them did several stories. So I don't have the room to export those from Final Cut to an actual video and then put them on one of my external hard drives. So I have to find an alternate way to take care of them. It's still been a lot of fun to go back down memory lane. So the, earlier this week, my husband and I were like, you know what, we're wanting to try to find another TV show to like watch while we eat dinner. And we decided to give the pilot episode of Inventing Anna on Netflix a try. And I have really enjoyed this and I hope to continue it. Also bonus, the reporter character was the main girl on My Girl, which definitely dates me. I know a couple of you are around my age, so you probably will know that reference, or you'll at least be aware of that movie, and hey, really enjoying it. Love the dynamics of the relationship between her and her husband. I love the brutal honesty they have with one another, and it's just really great. That has been my week eight wrap up, and now I'm gonna go and finish Prosper's Demon. And I did finish it, but you're gonna have to wait till next week for that wrap up. How did your week eight go? <laughs>